In this chapter, we're going to be talking about conditional statements. So we're going to talk about if, if else, else if, and switch statements. And what they do is basically just check for a condition. Um, and if that condition is met, then it'll do something. And if it's not, it can do something else. So every programming, well, just about every real programming language um, has some kind of conditional statements that you can use. Um, that's what makes all the decisions. So I'm going to create a new folder called uh, Chapter 2, Section 5. Put that right in there. And we're just going to need one file for this. And that's going to be an HTML file. All right, so let's open that up in our browser as well as Notepad. And I'm just going to paste in my HTML. So let's start with something real simple. We'll start with uh, just some basic algebra. So let's open up our script tags. And what I'm going to do is create a variable called x. And let's set that equal to 5. Now, we can check for a few different things. We can check if x is equal to 5 or not equal to 5. We can check if... Uh, x is greater than something or less than something. Um, so what I'm going to do is say if, and if statement is set up, um, I guess like a function, you have if and then the parentheses which take parameters and then the curly braces which we, what you want to put, where you want to type, whatever you want it to do if a certain condition is true. Um, so we're going to say if x, let's just say if x is equal to 5. Now this operator here, this, this double equals, this is a comparison. This is an assignment. So with, if you have one equal sign, you're assigning something to something. So in this case, we're assigning 5 to x or x to 5. In this case, we're comparing it. We're saying is x equal to 5. All right, so that's very important to differentiate these two symbols, okay, the double and single equal sign. So let's say if x is equal to 5, uh, what we want to do here, uh, I guess let's just alert, we'll alert, um, yes it is. Okay, so if we save this and let's open up our, let's reload this we get an alert that says yes it is. Uh, so let's change the value of x, let's change it to 4 and save. If we reload it doesn't do anything. Alright, so we can set this up so that it does do something um, using an else statement. So we can say else and then we want to open up some curly braces and inside that we put what we want if it's not true. So let's say alert We'll say no it is not. Okay, so if we reload that, we get no it is not. And like I said, we can use different kinds of um, conditions here. We can say if x is greater than, or I'll say, yeah, if x is greater than 5. So we get no it's not because x is equal to 4 and 4 is less than 5. So this is very simple algebra, really. Uh, if we change this to 6, we get yes it is. Um, now if we change this to 5 we get no it's not and the reason for that is we're asking if it's lower than 5. If we want to ask if it's 5 or lower then we can say is greater than or equal to 5 which will make it yes it is. Now what if we want to check multiple conditions? Uh, we can do that with what's called a logical operator, and we've used these actually in this chapter. We have and, or, not, and these have different symbols. So let me just go down here. Uh, if you want to check if something, if something and something else is true, we would use and. I'm sorry, which is uses two ampersand. If we want to use or, we would use two pipes. If we want to use not, that's one pipe. 
Okay, so those are the different symbols we can use. So let's say if x is, we'll just say if x is greater than 5 and x is less than, let's say, 10. All right, so we're using the, the and logical operator. We could also say or if x is greater than 5 or x is less than 10. So let's just see what we get here. Uh, let's say f let's say 4. Obviously this is going to say no it's not. 4 is not greater than 5 and well it is less than 10 but it's not greater than 5. In this case both of these need to be true. If we change this to or which is represented as two pipes yeah, that's the character that's above your enter key. If you hold in shift and press that button, you'll get these pipes. So if we save that, we get yes it is because it is less than 10. Okay, so let's go back to and, and let's put in seven. Seven comes back true or yes because it is greater than five and it's less than 10. And we can keep adding these if we want. Let's say, and x is, uh, we'll say, less than 8, I guess. This is kind of pointless, but just to show you that you can keep, keep adding on to this. So you can check as many things as you want. So we get, yes, it is. We can also use what's called an else if. And instead of just checking for something, and saying if it is or it isn't, we can check multiple things. So let me just show you, it's a little easier than explaining it. Um, so let's just get rid of these. And what we wanna do is we wanna say if something, then do this, else if something else, then do this. And then finally we can have a, an else that doesn't equate to either of these. All right, so let's um, let's just give a variable called color and let's set it to black. All right, so let's say if, sorry, can't type, if color is equal to red. Let's just, um, let's print out document dot write we'll say the color is red, okay? Now let's say else if color is blue, then we'll type out the color is blue. Now what this is doing is checking to see if color is red uh, and then it's gonna print out the color is red then it's checking if the color is blue, and it'll print out the color is blue. This is saying if it's anything else except red or blue. All right, so we can, let's just do document.write, the color is not red or blue. All right, so it's very simple logic. So if we save this, if we keep it on black, if we keep the color black, Um, let's see what's going on here. Unexpected token. I'm sorry, I get mixed up because uh, in some languages we can keep the else if together like this. In JavaScript, this needs to be separate. So save that. So we get the color is not red or blue. So if we change this to red, I'm sure you know what's gonna happen. It tells us the color is red. All right, so that's how you do an else if. Now you can keep tagging these on, these else ifs, um, as much as many as you want. So um, there's no limit to the, the um, comparisons you can have. Um, so that's it for if statements. That's pretty much the gist of it. Um, the next thing I wanna talk about is switch statements, and which basically do the same thing. So let's get rid of all of this. And what we're gonna do, let's set a variable x equal to four. All right, so what we wanna do is say switch 
and then inside the parentheses we want to put whatever it is we're testing in this case it's going to be X and then we just want to open some parentheses I'm sorry curly braces just like an if statement and we're going to use something called cases so we're going to say if the case of X being 2 and then we want to put a colon then we want to let's document dot write and we'll write out <coughs> excuse me we'll just write out um, X is 2 alright so underneath that we need to put a break because if that's true then we want to break out of this out of the statement okay um, so let's add another case before we test it out so let's say case if X is 5 and we want to do the same thing except we want to print out that it's 5 alright so if we save this if X is equal to 4 it's not going to do anything let's change it to 2 and we get X is 2 now let's change it back to 4 now let's say we want a default behavior um, just like the last else in an else if statement we can use default so let's um, let's document right X is not 2 or 5 so that'll be the default so save that and we get X is not 2 or 5 so you can see we can do the exact same thing with an if else statement as we can with a switch um, the last thing I want to do is actually paste in a switch snippets so same type of thing we are creating we're creating a variable called day and that's equal to a date object um, what we're doing here is instantiating a date object with which comes um, in JavaScript in the core I guess um, and then we're getting the day property which is just uh, 0 through 6 which represents the days of the week so we're saying switch and then what we're testing is the day alright so uh, let's just echo this up well we could just run this I guess um, so if the case is 0 then it's gonna say it's Sunday okay um, if the case is 1 Monday and so on so at the end of this we're going to alert the value of X so let's save this and reload and we get today is Wednesday which it is so that's just another way to implement a switch statement so that's pretty much it for uh, conditionals uh, the next thing we'll be looking at is JavaScript events